you all know, uh, approximately a year ago or so, I built this 20 foot, 10, or I guess it's technically 11,000 pound payload capacity trailer. And um, I really like it. It's been an awesome trailer. I've used it a handful of times. I've hauled thousands and thousands of pounds of material with it. And it's been, uh, it's been really good. But there are a couple things that I wish I'd done differently on it. Mainly, I wish I'd laid out the back of this a little differently because as most of y'all can see, it's uh, it, honestly, it just looks a little hacked and a little cobbled together. You know, I really like the design of this rail. That's not the issue, but the problem is like this license plate bracket thing. It's just like flopping it away down here. It actually, uh, I originally welded it on and it broke off. I hit something with it, so it's just held on by a couple bolts. So obviously, that's not good. Um, when I got this thing, set up I bought this little ultra chintzy three uh three light doobly doo here and for those that don't know you're supposed to have something like this on a vehicle over like 86 or 88 inches something like that because it signifies the presence of a wide vehicle I think it's redundant because there's already tail lights on each corner but regardless you're supposed to have it so we're going to be replacing this with three of these push through uh, LEDs. They're much higher quality. I mean, like one little tap on this thing and it's going to be broken off of here. The other thing, moving over this way, you can see with the, uh, with the tail lights and the turn signals and the brake lights, pretty much the same exact deal. Uh, just these plates, these actually haven't broken off yet somehow, but it just, it just doesn't look very good. It's not very strong. It's vulnerable to everything and we can do it a lot better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of two by six square two by bot. It's really thin wall thickness, only 14 gauge, so it's not gonna weigh a lot. It's gonna be plenty sturdy for this. We're gonna run it under here and we're gonna reposition all these lights. So hopefully it looks and works quite a bit better. Well, we're down here. I figure we might as well clean up this wiring a little bit. All right, so we're gonna use our um, plate removal tool. Here we go. That's that. All right, I suppose I should explain this. So. Since we're only using eight feet of this 20 foot thing and the rest of it is basically just leftovers, uh, instead of wrestling this through the shop, I'm just gonna cut it like an inch too long with the Sawzall, cause like we have the air compressor in here and the trailer and a bunch of tools and some machines that are just sitting around waiting to be picked up. And uh, so once I cut this off an inch too long, we'll clean it up on one of the chop saws or one of the band saws and then we'll position it under the trailer. This is gonna give us all the real estate we need to put on all the lights and everything else. And this looks so much better than the thing the jigger just hanging down. All right, so now we have to start thinking about drilling holes in this for the lights and everything. And I've learned that when you build something like this light bar, there's normally two ways you can go about it. You can uh, do your absolute best to make it completely watertight. You know, you, uh, you run grommets in the back for the wires and you seal everything with silicone or whatever. You make sure the gaskets fit really tight where the lights go in. The problem with that is eventually one of those grommets wears out and water gets in and then it corrodes all your connections and it rusts out the bottom of the tube. So what we're going to do is intentionally make it not watertight because like I said, if we make it watertight, I just don't think it's going to be watertight indefinitely. So we're going to drill several drain holes on the bottom side of this and uh, we're just going to have a little bit of open space where the on the back side where the lights are and the wires are just going to run out and um, it should still work out pretty well. Nice. 
So I've managed to learn a few things about welding thin material like this over the years. This is just a 14 gauge tube to an eighth inch cap and among them 2575 shielding gas and good settings are your friends. You can actually hear the buzz of this arc which is what I normally look for. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. So we've got a three quarter inch hole on this side of the light bar which is where this section of the light runs through and then there's like a one quarter inch hole on the other side, you know, through the grommet is about a quarter inch, outside of the grommet is about a half inch, where all these wires run through and I'm sure this is uh, simple stuff for a lot of you guys. I actually just figured it out a week or three ago. So what we've done here is we took a piece of filler rod, pretty much anything remotely like this will work, and we've taped our wires to it, taking special care to tape further than the ends of the wires to act kind of like a funnel. And so, what I'm gonna do is just poke this through. Now I'll just give it a little shove. Yep, it's through. All right, now I'm gonna pull the wire out. And now our wires have been run through in very little time, and that's really helpful because it would really suck to have to get these three wires running through there all at once. And now with this thing held up just a little bit, I'm gonna secure it with this uh, little sheet metal screw. There. Now it's on there. One more screw to secure the bottom half. That's the last light. All right, so at long last, we got this thing all wrapped up. We actually had it built and painted and everything last night, but it took me a little more time than I thought it would to get these connections because to get the connections done, because I really did everything I could to make these things as durable as possible because we all know how infuriating trailer lights can be when they don't want to cooperate. But uh, you know, we got the crimp connections going under there. Everything's coated in some really good quality uh, electrical tape as well and held up out of the way so it hopefully won't get snagged on trees and brush and whatnot if I have to drive this thing off road. And I, uh, I really, I don't want to bark up my own tree too much, but I really could not be any happier with the way this came out. I absolutely love it. You know, we've gone from, uh, I think when we look at it now, it looks like the back of a trailer should, because we've gone from having these three ugly flaps of metal just randomly hanging down that looks bad and that are ultra vulnerable to this sleek design. We've got this angle thing in here. These marker lights, these used to be on a plate that stuck out past the side of the trailer, so it's really vulnerable and they were gonna get whacked off. And uh, as opposed to having these really nice little LED lights, I had some of those really ultra cheap, absolutely terrible incandescence that I bought locally because I didn't order enough of these the first time. So instead of that, we have this which fits really nicely down in here. And uh, yeah, everything fits together really well. Everything works as it should. I think these are absolutely beautiful and um, I think it looks so, so much better than it did before. And the usability of this trailer has increased as well because like I said, now we don't have to worry about cheering off those pieces of metal. So really happy with this. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Wasn't really a blast to make, but it needed to be done. And I'm really glad I did it. It really wasn't that bad. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Yeah, re really, really happy with this. Hope you're happy with the video. See you next time.